Hello and welcome to another Cinema 4D tutorial hosted by me, Akers HD. In today's lesson we're going to be learning how to use dynamic most lines to create this effect. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that we want to add is the actual Mo spline itself and we can do that by simply going up to the MoGraph tab and selecting Mo spline. That's going to give us a default spline with one segment. So if we select the Mo spline and come over to the Simple tab, we get a load of parameters that we can adjust. We can adjust the angle H, P and B. So this will allow us to adjust the angle and direction of the spline. So I'm just going to set the P to 90 and the rest to 0 for now. We also have a segments adjuster so you can have more splines if you wish but we're just going to be working with one for now and there's also a length parameter that you can adjust to create longer splines or shorter splines. And there's also curve, bend and twist. This allows us to curve the spline or bend the spline in any direction. And all these can be keyframed. So now if we render, you'll see that the most spline isn't showing up in the render and that's because it's a spline. Splines don't show up in the render. So to make it visible within the render, all we need to do is simply go over to our spline tab here select a circle for example and then go over to our NURBS tab and select sweet NURBS and what we're going to do we're going to drop the spline circle into the sweet NURBS and also we're going to drop the most spline into the sweet NURBS as well but below the circle it's important to get the the structure right you always want the circle or the spline to be above the most spline within the sweep nubs. And now if we preview render now, you'll see that we've got a nice spline that's visible within the render. You can also go into the circle spline and adjust the parameters such as the radius. Or you can come into the most spline itself and adjust the width so the next step is to add the sphere on top of the spline and we can do that by simply selecting a sphere we're going to bring the radius down to maybe 15 or 20 we're going to reduce the segments because we don't really need that many segments because it's a small sphere and now what we need to do is connect that sphere to the top of the most spline and we can do that by simply selecting MoGraph tab coming over here to cloner selecting cloner and make the sphere a cloner a child of the cloner and all you have to do is simply drag and drop the sphere onto the cloner and we're going to change the mode from linear to object and what that gives us, that gives us a field, an object field to drag whatever object we feel necessary and for this example we want to use the most spline as the object so all you have to do is select the most spline select the cloner object first and then drag the most spline into the object field here and you can see that creates a number of clones along the MoGraph Mo spline and if we come over here to the cloner object select the cloner object we have the account and the count is used for either selecting less spheres or more spheres for the exa example today we're simply going to be using one sphere the offset allows you to move the sphere or object along the spline 
and if we set it to 99% that's going to set it right at the end of the most line and also there's a start and end value which you can adjust maybe to animate along the spline if you wish so now that we've got our basic most spline set up with a sphere attached to it all we need to do is drag the cloner object into the sweep nerves below the most spline and what that's going to give us that's going to give us just a nice sweetener package so everything's packaged nicely into that sweep nerves we've got our most spline our cloner object all in that one little group so it makes it easier to work with and the next step is to create a number of these splines so we want a few more and we can do that by simply selecting MoGraph coming over to cloner and we're going to drag and drop the sweep nerves into the cloner and make it a child of the cloner object. If we select the cloner object now, we're going to change the mode from linear to grid array. And we're going to set the middle value to 1. And we're going to leave the other two at 3. That's fine. You can have more if you wish but we're just going to stick with three for now so that gives us a number of splines to work with with spheres on the top and now what we want to do we want to randomize these a little bit just so they're not in that grid formation just so it looks a bit more randomized and we can do that by simply going to MoGraph effectors and select the random effector you want to make sure that the cloner object is selected when you select the random effector. Now by default the random effector X, Y and Z parameters are set to 50 centimeters, but we don't want that. We want the Y axis to be on zero. So they're all along the floor. We just want to affect the X and Z. So this is completely up to you, just move these around make it a bit more random and what you can do you can also drag and drop this random effect set into the cloner object just to keep things nice and tidy so we've got a nice little package here with our sweep nerves, our cloner object and also our random effector now the next step is to make these dynamic as you saw on the example they were kind of floating in the wind and to do that all we have to do is select our emitters tab which is here and select wind and we're just going to move the wind over here a lot sir now you can see that the wind isn't affecting the most blinds and that's because we haven't told the most blinds to be affected by the wind. So to do that, all we have to do is select the most spline and come over to the fields tab here. And there's an exclude and include mode. We want to change the mode to include and then just drag the wind into this field. So now that we've told the most spline to be affected by the wind, we can select the wind. And now we have wind speed, turbulence, turbulence scale and frequency parameters. We can turn up the wind speed, maybe to 5 or 10. And the wind speed is pretty self-explanatory, it's how fast the wind will go. We also have a turbulence value. The turbulence is regarding how fast they sway back and forth. The turbulence frequency is how often they swing back and forth. So the turbulence is how much they swing. 
and the frequency is how often they will swing. So you're welcome to play around with these parameters. So I'm just going to set the wind speed to 10. I'm going to set the turbulence to 100. I'm going to set the turbulence scale to 450 and I'm going to leave turbulence frequency at 50%. So this is going to give us a nice natural movement as if they're blowing in the wind. So that's pretty much the main animation done. What we're going to do now is create the background and floor. So what we're going to do we're going to go come over to our light tab here. We're going to select a floor go into the lights tab again and select background I'm going to come over to the materials browser double click that's going to create a new material for us if we open up the material I'm going to create a nice gradient background so if we turn off specular and then come over to color select texture gradient select the gradient and we're going to change the type from 2D U to 2D circular and I'm going to set the black to white and I'm going to set the white to a really nice light blue like so and that's going to give us a nice vignette background maybe make the blue a little bit lighter you just want a really subtle blue okay now we're ready to apply this texture to the floor and background so all we have to do is drag that newly made texture onto the background and also onto the floor so if we hit render now it's not quite what we're after we want a nice seamless background as if it was in a studio so to do that all we have to do is select the floor object right click on the floor object cinema 4d tags and select compositing tag that's going to add a compositing tag to the floor object within the compositing tag we're just going to uncheck composite background we're going to check composite background and uncheck self shadowing and we're going to select the material for the floor that's the one we've just made with the nice white and blue gradient and we're going to change the projection to from flat to frontal and that should give us a nice gradient background, seamless background to work with I'm also using two soft boxes from Grayscale Gorilla's Lightkit Pro if you haven't got the Lightkit Pro don't worry you can come over to the light lights tab and use area lights and then just set the area lights up in the same position as if they were soft boxes and I've also made the left soft box it's just got a nice light blue tint on it so if we come over to the soft box you can see that I've got a nice light blue light on it so that gives us some nice blue reflections and you can do that on your light just by simply going to area light and then changing the light colour so now that we've got our seamless background what we want to do we want to texture the most lines and the spheres so come over to the texture browser again double click open up the new material that we've just made the colour the colour you can be whatever you wish but I'm just going to choose a nice black material so I'm going to set the colour to black come over to reflection select 
reflection. Change the texture of the reflection to for now. And bring down the brightness and also the mix strength. And then all you have to do is drag that newly, ma newly made material onto the sphere and that gives us a nice reflective sphere as you can see there you may want to come into the sphere object and turn up the segments so we've got a really nice round circle but it will take longer to view in the timeline and render the more segments you have so just be aware of that and you can also add this texture to the sweep nerves and that will texture the most lines or you can create a new texture for the most lines and have a different texture so if we have a quick render so this is looking now we've got some nice reflections of the soft boxes and also we've got these nice shadows on the bottom and this is created by the area shadows on the soft box but once again this effect can be easily created from the lights that are within Cinema 4D so now that we've got our texturing done our lighting done our seamless background done the animation is done all that's left now to do is render so if we go into our render settings the anti-aliasing if you're working with a lot of reflections like we are in this scene it might be useful to turn the anti-aliasing from none or geometry to best and minimum level one by one maximum level two by two and then all you have to do is select your usual render settings and you're good to go so thanks for watching this video and I will see you again very soon in another video tutorial